Hey Power Pack fans! Last episode we released our amazing interview with John Bogdanov. During that interview we found that we had a lot, and I mean a lot, to talk about with this fascinating character. And that means we had a lot of content. Instead of just storing that into a file that would never see the light of day, we have decided to cut this into a second episode. Since this is mostly consisting of tangents and stories that spun off into other directions, this will sound a lot more like an extended outtake segment from the end of our normal episodes. Also, it does not feature too much about Power Pack. It really is just three guys talking. Additionally, this gives us a tiny little break to catch up on some of our behind-the-scenes stuff as well, which is kind of nice for us. But we promise that next episode we will return with the original Power Pack run with our coverage of issue 48. And we will be featuring everyone's favorite podcrasher, Tim Price. Say hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. So sit back and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. This is... Wonderful. We really, really appreciate it. Oh, you guys, I'm so happy to do it. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the show. That is amazing. That really is amazing that, uh, first of all, that one of the creators or writers or anybody is actually kind of like, it's like, oh, yeah, I listened. So when you had come, text tweeted us or something going, oh, hey, this and this. It's like, really? You, you sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty good at faking my way through stuff. <laughs> And I'm a huge fan of your work on comics, Mr. John Bogdanoff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I, this is why I can't take him anywhere whatsoever. Can't take him anywhere yeah. at all. I know, you had to fake a pandemic just to keep me yeah, home. Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say, the plague works in your favor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of does, sort of does. I, I really, I enjoy the show. I love your banter. I, I love your take on the characters and the stories and the editorializing it makes me want to like go out and have a beer with you guys. Oh, we'd love that. That'd oh, be really great. We would love that. <laughs> also, Rick, your daughter is a wonderful actress and she has the most classic kids voice imaginable. I think if, if they were doing a power pack cartoon or something, we'd have to recruit her. <laughs> that would be cool. Oh, I am keeping that audio. I'm glad I'm recording right now. Yeah. <laughs> And, and listen, our son, Kalel is a voice director, mostly on video games. Uh, and I have a lot of exposure to the voice acting world. And I have to, and so that's a, that's a slightly educated opinion. Carrie is really good. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. It, the more we do it, the more I don't have to do my own coaching with her. I know that my wife has watched me sometimes and she's like, it's kind of amazing how you get her to sound like that or to, to you know, come across like that. Because I work with her. I'm like, oh, try that again. Try to say it this way. And I'm like, I have a theater background and I'm just trying to use that. I know what I want to hear. I've got, I got it playing in my head. But honestly, what we are doing is just two guys who are goofing around. We have... No experience of this. The experience that we have, you have heard from episode one until now. That's it. <laughs> well, I, I think, uh, I mean, I think Cal would tell you that that's kind of what acting is, that, that the best thing you can do as an actor is play, which is why sometimes kids like Carrie are really naturals because kids just naturally play. And, and they're less likely to get in their own way. Self-conscious adults will. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, no, she's great. She's great. She's actually out at the park right now with my wife. One of my coworkers has a daughter that's about Carrie's age. And we find that the good social distancing play that they can do is put them on masks, go to the park, and have them ride their scooters. Because... I was doing... How, I worry about kids, particularly really young kids, for whom this is, you know, a quarter of their life so far. Or something. And I worry about the developmentally, how they're going, how it's going to affect their ability to socialize, how it's going to affect their, their, you know, bonding style or whatever, the, their attachment style, relationships. How, how, how do you feel like 
Carrie is doing not going to school and having to keep a social distance between her friends and all of that? It's a great question, and it's something that we're struggling with. I, I will be the first to say that we have an amazingly good kid. We are extremely lucky with our daughter. She's That much is evident. Yeah, she, she's it's not even a bragging thing. It's really not a bragging thing. It's just kind of seeing how other parents are kind of like, some of them are at their wits end. Some are like, I can't, I don't know what to do. Our kids are going crazy. For the most part, our daughter is, she's fine with reading. She's fine with kind of taking care of herself. My wife and I are both working during the day. So she kind of comes and sees us. That being said, we have noticed some emotional issues have come up. She just, she seems a little more sad. She seems a little more depressed. And so that lack of communication, that lack of actually getting together with other kids her age and having a lot of interactions, we are seeing it. We've done our own things to try to mitigate that as much as we can. We have another friend of ours who, um, they also have an only child. Uh, Carrie and, and uh, Mason used to go to school together. He moved up to another town over. But we made a deal with them. We we both have the same social distancing rules in place. And so we kind of said, okay, we trust this family. This is our bubble. So we go, like, their son has been over here. Our daughter's been over at his house. We've had dinner together pretty much every Friday night. We've had dinner together. So not only are the kids having some socializing where they can actually get together, interact, you know, actually play... Good. The adults also have their own, oh my God, there's another adult we can talk to. So it, it's trying to make sure that you can have that recognition and make that kind of choice. Like, okay, we are going to trust you and you only, and this is going to be our extended bubble that we have. We do things like that. A neighbor girl who's a teenager down the street, she's been uh, tutoring Carrie because Carrie speaks Spanish. So she's been doing some of the tutoring. And yeah, it's... It's interesting. It's it's very difficult, but we've had to make some choices in order to make sure that that cognitiveness is there. So if you and your wife are both out of the house during the day, oh, no, we, where does Carrie go? We actually work in the house. We both are working uh, in the house. Oh, that's the best. We, we are lucky. My wife, uh, prior to this, she was working four of the five days a week out of the house. So they just moved her for, totally in the house. I work for the Oregon State. Oh. Yeah. I used to you. I used to work in unemployment insurance. <laughs> we got a little busy, so I, I was the, I was the risk factor by leaving the house. So, yeah. so we got lucky that we could both be here, and we were fortunate, and we understand that we were fortunate. But knock wood, knock wood that that will continue, and that you'll get through this with you know minimal impact. I I, I have to say, as a as a freelancer who always has worked at home. You know, lockdown is not that much different from normal life for me. There are so many parenting advantages to working from home yeah. that just make the the experience for the kid better, but also better for you, you know, as a parent, because you miss less. Yeah, there's just a lot of things that we've realized since we've had our daughter, you know, things such as my wife works from home, I work 45 minutes away from home. My wife has to be the one to go and pick her up from school. My wife has to be the one to do this kind of thing. And for years, I've said, you know, if there's any chance I can to try to help out more, I try to. I will be the first to say my wife is the reason why we are so successful, because she does a lot. And I probably don't recognize her as much as I should. But she puts up with me, so. <laughs> she, you could recognize her. She's the one in the wedding photos, Rick. You know, you're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. what about you? You have kids? Yeah, I have a, a daughter. She's going to be three in a week. Wow. Yeah, it is a lot. It's so much. It is just uh, we're we're fortunate because we're both stay at home parents. That's great. Yeah, it, it it works out really nicely for that. And because being the stay at home parents with a two coming on to three year old, it was like. Oh man, it, yeah, like probably with you for the working at home, it's like, oh, we're in lockdown. Man, this is sad. Not a huge amount has changed. You know, I'm still not able to go out with my friends and do stuff. I haven't seen a movie in four years. You know, <laughs> it's just, <clears throat> you know, it's like, you know, here's the difference. Other people are like, oh man, I'm so bored, but I'm watching a lot of Netflix. I'm like, I, no, no, not watching TV. I do what oh, I always just, do. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's like drinking the day away. I'm like, no, not getting to do that. Oh man, I'm baking all this bread or doing these hobbies. And it's like, yeah, that'd be cool too. I'm, uh, I'm building the same Lego set over and over and over again. <laughs> so that, that's my skill is I can build a Lego friends turtle rescue almost, you know, without looking at the instructions now. So <laughs> But yeah, other, before this, I worked infectious disease laboratory for 15 years. Oh, no. And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, they did a, a big layoff and it was kind of like, well, this works out well because we're going to have the kids so I can be the stay at home dad. And then uh, Hillary, my fiance, she was working for a venture capitalist corporate uh, business. And so she did her maternity leave, went back. And four days later, she calls me and she goes, hey, come pick me up. And it's like, wow, what's going on? She goes, well, venture capitalist is selling off. It's, uh, you know, selling stuff off. So I'm going to be home now forever, too. So it's like, OK. <laughs> well, and, you know, now they're probably really sad that they let you go because. Yeah, potentially, but it was just, uh, yeah, it's what is. But yeah, otherwise it's kind of worked out great because we just decided we're like, well, we'd pick up jobs if we needed to, but we our finances are in our way where we're like, we don't have to worry about it, and you know, until after you know the kid starts going to school if that ever happens. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like we can. So we're you know home a hundred percent of seeing the kid grow up. So many people talk about, they're like, Oh, I missed those years. And that happened so quickly. And it's like, man, I'm feeling every decade of those years. So <laughs> now, now you are, but yeah. take my word from it, from the other side of, you know, Kalel is 35 now. Walking and talking. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. Old joke. Man. <laughs> he's been doing that. He's been doing that since a lot younger than three, <laughs> but they, I mean, it really in retrospect, it goes so fast. It really does. It's it's killing me where I'm like, she's th she's almost three. Oh, man. It's how? Because, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it, time flies. So, time really runs. She's one of these kids for whom COVID lockdown is almost, uh, you know, the third of her life. Yeah. And and certainly half of the, the stuff she can remember. So... How do you think that's affecting her developmentally in terms of her socialization and attachment style and stuff like that? How does she, how does it affect the way she relates to the outside world? Uh, she used to be very run up and give people hugs and we've, you know, kind of kiboshed that. So any interactions with people are having, you know, the distance of, you know, like 10 feet or something anyway. So it's kind of like, so she's kind of learned where it's just like, Hey, Oh, I, I'll just be here. So, you know, we've gone like over to a friend's place or something and visited on the driveway. And sometimes, you know, she, she can do the visitor. It's like, I'll just go and run with her in the lawn. Well, you know, like the rest of the family visits in a driveway or something. Or there was one of the times where we were going over to like drop off a birthday present for somebody. Yeah. And she was like, birthday, 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 birthday. And super excited we get there. She wants to run up to give Aunt Lisa a hug. And we're like, oh, no, 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 no. And, you know, like Lisa and Tom are all, no, you can't do that. So she stops and just, with, you know, she was just like so disappointed that she's just like, can I go in the car? Cause she likes playing in the car. Cause it's like, you know, it's like a jungle gym kind of thing. So it's sure. like, okay, let's just go play in the car. So, uh, otherwise it's, we're, you know, she, since she's almost three, it's, this is about the best time that this could be happening for us because, you know, it's like she does, you know, she has a friend that, you know, her age that we go and do stuff with and everything we're used to. We're really her peer group anyway. So it's sad because there's some neighbor girls that she, you know, anytime they were out, it's like, Oh, Hey, let's go out. And then they can all play together and draw chalk and, run around do whatever but now it's kind of like oh they're outside well i guess we're inside now so it's been a lot of you know in-house backyard some out front but Do, does and this is really a question for both of you guys uh does your daughter and does carrie think of this as different from normal life or is it to the point now where this is just life for them carrie <sighs> Carrie no, definitely knows the difference. She, she she talks about, you know, we, we used to do things in the future. And I think mm -hmm. that my wife and I have been trying our best to be a little more positive around her because it's very easy for us to get into that our own echo chamber of this sucks. This is horrible. What are we going to do in the future? My wife's freaking out about mm -hmm. the next school year and about, you know, are we going to keep carrying Spanish because we don't speak Spanish. So how are we going to teach her in Spanish and how are we going to do this? And, you know, is it all going to be online? We can't do it online. That's going to kill us. And, and, you know, even the things about us talking politics, you know, we, we can't talk politics in front of her because we're like, 
this administration. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and, you know, our daughter has a very strong line and we're like, when, you know, I, I want my daughter to come up with her own argument about why this is right and this is wrong. But no, she's towing our line of like, can we not talk about Trump? Okay, honey. All right. Okay. <laughs> She understands it, and, and she definitely recognizes the, what's going on, how this is different, and the changes that we have to make. And she's, you know, she's seen us. She's seen it too, where she's like, "Well, I guess I just don't have those friends anymore. I can't see them anymore." Yeah, that's the sad thing. It's kind of like you still have those friends. You just, you just, it's going to be a little bit. Yeah, it's just on hold. And, it's just on hold, Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just hard when you're that age because it's so much of your life and you're I just know. like, yeah. you know, it, it's it's hard to do that delayed gratification or that understanding. You know, it's but like I want, when, I want the thing. <laughs> you know, what is it four four months for us now? But four months for us is a fraction of our lives. Four yeah. for them is a significant piece of their life. Oh, it's and, huge, and yet at yeah. the same time, I know that for myself, I keep looking at the calendar and I'm like, yeah, that was all. That was only four months ago. Dear God, I, yeah. I can remember. Well, it's that trade-off. It's that really long, short period of time. There's been a lot of years in this six months. For a lot of adults, we're having a hard time really contemplating. I can remember the day that this all went downhill. We had this new team I started working for. We had an off-site meeting that we were doing at uh, an abbey in, in uh, around Salem area. And we were doing, it was supposed to be a two-day event, and we're at that one-day event, and, like, instantly there's all these rules about, you know, we're going to be cleaning everything as this is going on, we all have to sit far apart, we can't congregate, and we're all like, what's happening, what's happening? And then we're told at the end of the day, yeah, uh, just go back to work tomorrow because we can't do this anymore. And then it was like, okay, if you are an essential employee, just go home. So just, like, in one day it changed, and I'm just looking at it, and I'm going, that was four months ago, and... It just, it seems like it was two years ago. So it's the, the time compression is weird. It's right very, now. very weird. I know. I know. Um, the, the night before lockdown, we had, you know, the usual gang over uh, the, the group of, none of them are kids now, of course, but Judy and I call them the cool kids. Uh, and they're like coworkers of Kal-El's uh, friends he made when he worked at Disney comic book artist named Bobby Timoney, who works with me sometimes, but they're all, you know, they're 30 somethings like Kalel, which now for me is a kid, you know, they were all over here for game night, which used to be like this really common thing that we all took for granted, you know, bring over some wine and some soda and some charcuteries and stuff like that and sit around and pay, play telestrations. And it was, it was glorious fun. The next day, lockdown happened, and my friend Bobby was like, did we infect John and Judy? Are they going to die because of us? They're in the high-risk age category. <laughs> and for me, it was kind of like that last uh, Dairy Queen run, where I'm like, is this the last blizzard I'm going to have uh -huh. ever? Ever? Yeah. <laughs> ever? I mean... I haven't been to a store, you know, we use Instacart, mm -hmm. been to a store. Yep. We haven't, you know, we've been in the car maybe twice in 122 days. Are you guys still counting the days? No, nah, I never counted. Oh, it's 122 days. <laughs> yeah. That I, I, yeah, never, never did that. Uh, reading a, a book by a, a, a astronaut. I can't remember his name right now, but he was saying, you know, he was the longest in space guy for uh, for the little bit of time until I think somebody just beat him. But he was saying, yeah, the trick on that is to count up. You don't count down. No, particularly in this, because we actually don't know the terminus. We don't know what yeah. zero would be. So we we have no choice but to count up. And I, I'm trying to take sort of a, um, a prisoner of war attitude of not clinging to hopes that it's all going to be over in six months, you know, but to actually take the most bleak Russian novelist point of view and, you know, imagine the worst it could be, you know, it's like, well, some viruses, we never get a virus. We never get a vaccine. I'm my basis is a uh, Spanish flu two and a half years. That, Anything before that is. And that's the basis I'm hoping for is two and a half years. 
that it will die out of its on its own and we'll have herd immunity or whatever. But the fact of the matter is we don't actually know. It could be with us yeah. forever. They could yeah. Run- and- yeah, we don't have enough information yet. Yeah, we don't have enough information. And the information changes every day because science learns more about the virus every day. Mm-hmm. And they they can't predict if they'll have, you know, a vaccine in 18 months or two years or decades. They honestly do not know. And they honestly do not know if we can acquire herd immunity because some of the statistics say that even if you survive the disease, your uh, immunity only lasts about three months, and then you can catch it. I was going to say, I just read that the other day. Yeah. And here's the other. And here's the other part: is we find finally get a viable uh, vaccine that is using. We can't get people to wear masks <laughs> to stores. We are not going to be able to get those same people who I got freedom, and I got my own. You know, you can't make me do that. We can't get them to take the virus or the vaccine. So. What's the point? What's the point? I mean, if it's the type of thing, if in fact immunity only lasts three months, it means you get boosters yeah. every three months. And that, mm-hmm. and that becomes the new normal. And people yep. who choose not to get vaccinated, I mean, that's a Darwinian situation, unfortunately. You know? Well, but then, of course, you got the people who medically have a, a real reason why they can't get the vaccine and now they're at danger yes. for those people like i said it's it's the worst case scenario mm-hmm. and i'm i'm hoping for a better case scenario but i read a, or listened to a news article about some one of the uh state senators in florida i listened to him on cnn and i'm just like people voted for this person to represent their district in their state and this guy's talking like it the, the reporter is just like but Facts. <laughs> no. Facts. 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 I, I have feelings. All I can say to that is that history shows that plagues like this have lasting effects. And for a good number of the most notorious plagues of history, they have been followed by or they've ushered in an age of advancement in social issues and adva- and a boom in the economy and and uh, uh, leaps of enlightenment um, you know in terms of mimetics and and I, I mean the, the the black death the bubonic plague was followed by the renaissance the spanish flu was followed by the roaring 20s there was a, a terrible plague in the early 1700s which which was followed on its heels by uh, by the enlightenment and the american revolution so there is, and I don't want to create false hope, but there is some historical precedence for the possibility that on the other end of this thing, we will be a better world. That that uh, in some ways, you know, the analogy you could use is, well, Mother Nature is giving us a time out as a species. She's like, okay, you kids, stay inside. Mama needs a little while to clean up your mess. And, and, uh, and so stay inside and, and think about what you've done. And it might be that when we come out of time out, uh, we'll maybe have learned a few things and maybe some things will be better. And maybe some people will be more sensible. I mean, I'm, I'm very curious to see. I'm very curious to, to see how things change. Things don't always improve, but there's significant historical evidence to say that that uh, plagues often do improve things for those that survive. Yeah, I'm always, yeah, I'm curious to see how it kind of. Tur- I'm in no rush to get to the future, but I'm always kind of like I'm curious to see what's going to go on, you know, in four months. In yeah, for I'll pick a date for some reason near the beginning of November, and then you know, say sometime in January. Curious to see what's going to go on, but then yeah, for also curious to see, you know, it's even with, with so much stuff going on, it's like with the, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement right now. I'm curious to see if that actually creates any kind of shift, because historically, anytime this kind of thing happens, it's like, hey, yeah, we're, that's right. This is a problem. Let's do nothing about this. Well, right. And, and that's one thing I was going to say, too, is that I wonder what would have happened if we were not in this plague situation, when when these last protests occurred, we've had protests like this before that have like we are going to do something and then and then everything kind of fizzled mm-hmm. out. 
this is actually really still going oh, yeah. forward. I mean, right. there have been things that have actually changed. Monuments have actually been removed this time. Um, sports teams' the, names the, the are getting Sports changed. teams are actually yeah. changing their names. It's like we had to pretty much put that in permanent ink. That's not going to mm -hmm. happen. That's happening. Uh, there are things that are starting to slightly change. There are some municipalities that are saying, no, we are going to defund the police. We're going to come up with another solution. Yep. And in places they've done that, it's really worked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so things are kind of changing in there. If this had happened not in this virus time, would the same things have happened? I don't think so. I don't know. No. Yeah. Honestly. I, I wonder if the direness of the situation really makes people think that, well, maybe we have to stop putting off getting better. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have to stop putting off to the, to, the, to the next generation. Maybe we have to actually start doing something. That maybe tomorrow uh, is today. Yeah. Yes. And one of, the, one of the things that has encouraged me about uh, the, the protests is that, you know, two months ago when it started, I thought, oh, my God, all those people having their respiratory systems challenged by tear gas, all those people being herded together by police. It's going to be a covid meltdown among that demographic among progressives, among mm -hmm. uh, people of color, among liberals. It's going to be it's going to be a holocaust of covid-19. And so far, it hasn't been statistically higher than it would normally be. In other words, the protesters are wearing masks. That's a big part right there. Yeah. Protesters are carrying bottles of Purell. They're being intelligent about it and, and thinking about facts. So while it's true that, that, you know, people in poverty and people on the lower end of, of the financial spectrum have higher incidence of the disease, of the disease, it does, it hasn't seemed to have singled out active as much as I was afraid of. And that to me says, says two good things. One, that they're going to able to still be activists. And two, it encourages mm -hmm. the changes that they're looking for. So I found that to be encouraging. Anyway, you know, we need whatever encouragement we can get. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And at the same token, it's also funny to see that when the other side has gotten together. Yeah. There seems to be a spike because no wearing mask, no social distancing, no following the rules. Right. Well, I mean, I don't want to give into Schadenfreude and say, ha ha, ha. you know, <laughs> yeah. here we are. Let's 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 weed out the morons. But you know, if some of the people in that demographic who have scoffed at wearing masks and who have scoffed at social distancing start getting it that uh, and survive they'll spread the word and people might people might learn you know and and who knows there might be a renaissance of an acceptance of science in a demo in a demographic that heretofore has scoffed at science and scoffed at fact and scoffed at at reason and logic we can only only we can only hope mm -hmm. All right. I, I want to continue this conversation. I want to continue this conversation, but I also want to make sure that before you look at us and say, okay, I need to go to sleep. I want to try to get our questions yeah, done. I cast about after all. And... Yeah. I, I don't know. We, 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 we kind of go off the rails anyway, so it's all hey, let's, good. Let's just cover the basis of it and go, hi, I'm John, and then say costumes off. And, yeah, and, and then, then, and then, then we can just fill in the middle part. <laughs> Fuck. By the way, this book. Dear God. <laughs> I sent my daughter down to get it. Uh, the other night I was having her write the question she was going to ask you. And so I said, well, go downstairs, get the book, get this book. I'll show you some of his artwork. I'll show you some things he, he drew and wrote. So she came walking up the stairs, just like holding this chair. She goes, this is heavy. Yeah, it's almost the, half her weight. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> It doesn't even have the issues that I most want her to have, to enjoy. This is true. This is only number one, and, and and this this does kind of stop before some of your real good stuff, which we just covered. Neverwhere, elsewhere. elsewhere. I cannot remember that. I, my daughter was mocking me the other day. She goes, "It's elsewhere, yeah, it's Dad." Elsewhere. I'm like, "I, I." It's not hard, Rick. I wrote a theme song I for know. it in case it becomes a cartoon. I did that on <laughs> spec. For real? Yeah, for real. Listen, if you listen to the episode, when you catch up, when you get up to that, I uh, it's it's coming out. Oh, uh, this oh we weekend. haven't. Okay, I don't know what our release schedule is, but uh, yeah, I, I I wrote a little uh, theme song for it. <laughs> so, 
I can't wait. I could give you a preview of it if you want. Yes, please. We're going on an adventure, a magic elsewhere ride. We're going on an adventure, we'll go by pocket slide. We'll make some friends, we'll take a look at a land that looks like it's from some books. We're going on an adventure, we're going on an adventure, we're going on an adventure elsewhere. Oh, I love it. I love it. (laughs) My gift to you out of a... Big guitar solo in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why, I just felt like I had to do that. Because it was just just so... I'm like, this is crazy and I love it and... Maybe it, maybe if Power Pack ever becomes a a cartoon or something sometime, I'm like, then they could be like, oh, we need to have some sort of cool theme song for this Elsewhere world. I'm like, well, here it is. Done. Done. You've got it. Here's the thing. If Power <laughs> Pack, like, for instance, a Netflix series, right? Elsewhere is the kind of story you'd have to do in, like, the fifth or sixth season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like after you've done after you've done the clip pastiches, yeah. you know, <laughs> pastiches and it's like it almost doesn't matter what happens anymore <laughs> then you <do> it elsewhere <laughs> it, it is really that bottle episode that's just out there are it's this elsewhere time okay here mm-hmm. we go here we are <laughs> time to go to elsewhere. is this did i tune into the right time and the right channel did this get preempted by something what's what is this well katie's in did there he, so yeah, that's katie <laughs> did the animators take a lot of acid or something i'm not sure what's going on here <laughs> Actually, when you when you first started off, I thought you were in elsewhere because it was sideways. Yeah, I had I had uh, screen lock on. I know that that that's just us reading the elsewhere yeah. book. Actually, it's it was yeah, it, it was a lot of it was it was a lot of it was a lot of this. It was like yes, yes, I know. Not only did I make everybody read it sideways, but then I started turning things around. <laughs> All right, uh, we have one more little thing, and then we're going to get into the, uh, the the actual chit chat. So we'll do the. Uh, the rest of our intro here. Fuck. I need to run upstairs and go get the cold glass and stuff real quick. I'll be one second. Real quick. Real quick. I, I'll, I'll tell you a story that's not related to anything. Um, this morning, about four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I heard this just annoying uh, mechanical noise outside my window about in the location where our air conditioning unit is. So I turned it off and then kind of waited a little bit and turned it back on and went back to bed. Woke up at about 6 o'clock and was like, hmm, still hearing that noise. So I turned it off, and my wife woke up. I said, yeah, you've got the relationship with the heating and air conditioning place. Why don't you give them a call? So they came out about 9.30 and said, hey, this is about 20 years old, and that motor is seized up. Oh, boy. Like, All right, go ahead. go ahead and bring out the salesman. So we, the salesman just left about... 30 minutes before, or no, actually about 45 minutes before the show started. And uh, next week, we will be the proud new owners of a brand new air conditioning unit. That's that's actually really good because we got a lot of hot weather coming up. And uh... Well, right now here, I, and I'm in the basement, which is the coolest part of the house. The door is closed, though, and I have turned off the fan. By the end of this, and also I'm interviewing somebody and I'm so already a little jazzed up. By the end of this, I should be <laughs> soaked. It will be awesome. Well, It'll be just like, uh, you know, and and I'm I'm right with you. And unfortunately, I'm I'm wearing a shirt that in a little while is going to make me look like a southern sheriff <laughs> uh, because those pit patches are really going to show. But uh, fortunately, it's audio only, so audio only. We're, we're three a, guys hanging out. The sweat patches are uh, warm weather professor patches instead of the tweed on the elbows. It's the uh, right. <laughs> sweat in the pits. But, uh, well, fortunately, radio, no one can hear you sweat. But we get to watch each other go like. Hey. <sighs> <laughs> I, I do like I do like the fact that you're drinking a pitcher of looks like iced tea. That is yes, pretty awesome. my my little my little tea shirt right nice. here. Nice. So let me see if I can pick back up where it was. Fuck. Yeah, nice and crisp. In fact, I said I'm going to put this into the freezer for an hour so that way I make sure it doesn't freeze over and then I can get to it and, and I even set an alarm for it and the alarm went off and I said yep and then another hour went by and I said oh <laughs> oh yes well it's- and then I ran and then I pulled it out and I put it to my ear and I moved it and I said yes I hear liquid okay so then I put it in the fridge so it's definitely cold no this is um fuck 
How many comics is it? There's there's 64 comics in the original series, plus there's a few different series that occurred after the end of Power Pack that uh, have different members in it. Uh, in the early 2000s, there was a mini series that came out, and then there was a couple of other occurrences where they popped up over the years. Uh, recently, there was a Future Foundation that had two members of Power Pack, so we're going to yeah, cover those Yeah, that only ran issues. four or five <sighs> issues, I think. Uh, that were, uh, okay. Five or six, I think. Uh, that was uh, written right, by yeah, Jeremy was, Whitley. Yeah. And then um, coming out soon, uh, it was supposed to be out by now, but there is a small series that's tied in with the Outlaw run that Marvel's doing of Power Pack. And it was supposed to be out by now, but COVID. Yeah. So it should be coming out soon. But, and then Wheezy and yeah. June were going to be going back, and they were supposed to be doing, a, I think, a five-parter. But that's, yeah, yeah that's a little limbo but too. I think it's still probably going on after you run out of power pack a good one perhaps to uh to attempt is squirrel girl that's not a bad idea that is not a bad idea at all i actually had this um this big chapter book that's all about squirrel girl and her um little squirrel and her friends and stuff what's her what's her what's her friend's name um tippy tippy (laughs) tippy toe it's tippy toe it's tippy i know it's at least i know it's tippy it's It's tippy it's tippy yeah Tippy toe, yeah. Fuck. Tell him about your little comic books. What little comic books? These are the little comic books you create. Like ones with my Mason, too? Yeah. Um, so I had this friend, his name is Mason, and we do these comic books. We did, like, the cat shop. At one point, we even did our own version of Power Pack. Oh, that's awesome! I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you some copies of some things that she's done. Would that be okay, Carrie? Can you send me some copies? Awesome. Thank you. I'll have you I'll have you pick out your favorite one and we'll send them to him. Mm-hmm. A uh, little side story. Uh, back in January, there was the uh, Image Comics creator. Or, um, yeah, Image Comics. Yes. The, uh, the, the founders of Image Comics uh, were in town in, in, uh, Washington, or in Vancouver, Washington, doing a signing. And so they had... Um, you know, Todd McFarland and you know, all all that group, they were all there and they were doing signings. And so I was outside waiting. I didn't get a ticket, so I was waiting a long time. In fact, I had to have people keep my spot in line so I could pick her up from a drawing class she was at and then go back there. And so she's sitting there. She had a comic book that she had done with her cousin. It was regular notebook paper. It was about 46 pages. And it was just kind of a... It was a real jam session. It was her and her cousin just drawing and writing and drawing and writing. They didn't really know where they were going. They just did it. Oh, that's so Yeah, so, we never I never really do plots. Yeah. So so she she had this book with her because she had shown it to the, her drawing because of her comic book drawing class. And so she's flipping through it as we're waiting in line and we start going through the line. Well, we're getting to the table and they've already gone an hour over and so they're just trying to get as many people through as possible. And I'm like, I'm getting stuff ready because, you know, we'll, we only get one book that Todd McFarlane can sign, and you know, everybody's going to sign one thing, so I'm getting everything ready. guy behind me asked if Carrie could hold one of the books so he could have two books signed. I was like, well, we'll see. We'll try it out. So as we're getting close, Todd McFarlane's coming down the line. He's just signing things right down the line. Tell Carrie, hey, give me your book. Let me put it away so you can hold this book. And So I'm trying to put it away, and Todd McFarlane comes up and goes, hey, wait, what's that? Let me see it. Starts going through it, and on the spot, starts just stops. And goes through the book and is talking to Carrie about the book and saying, this is amazing. This is incredible. Or, Do you enjoy doing this? You should keep doing this. And just giving her this positive, you know, reinforcement, which, you know, you think, here's this big highfalutin comic book writer who's got his own empire. You know, he's got time for fans. Sure. He's not going to stop and just talk to you. No, he stopped and talked to this little girl and encouraged her and then said, wrote on her book, keep doing it. And I got a picture of it, and it was just one of those moments of like, this is this means something be, to have an artist, a creator, provide oh, that yeah. inspiration, provide that feedback, and it, and it means a lot to her, it meant a lot to me, it meant a lot to everybody standing around us too. You remember that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it was yesterday. Like it yeah. was yesterday. <laughs> Four times. <laughs> Fuck. And notice we got her the uh, yep. the Katie Power shirt. Speaking of which, I see that you, <laughs> me, and Rick are both on brand today with a. <laughs> and, I love that. Um, and actually, uh, you have provided me your 
address, and I haven't done anything at all with it. I wouldn't dare to, but I would like to send you one of our T-shirts, if I may. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I would be more than happy to. Actually, we have tons of other swag, too. Yeah, Rick <laughs> likes to buy stickers. <laughs> I do. Uh, I, I, I actually have beer coasters. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I have... <clears throat> I have stickers. <laughs> I am not allowed, actually. I shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the, uh... <laughs> I'm going to say this funny. The corporate <laughs> credit card, which is actually my credit card. <laughs> and We're it's, not that high for And it's like we actually have... <laughs> corporate credit card. It's all deductible, my friend. Yeah, it. we got ourselves a Patreon account, and, uh... Because, you know, we do we do Patreon. We have a Patreon account? Do. do we have any money in there? Not yet. <laughs> the, the the money we are starting to get out of the red eventually. <laughs> it, it basically the the Patreon money that that comes in is pretty much to pay off the things it's we bought. Bandwidth and beer is we, what I call it. I, I, yeah, bandwidth and beer is what it is. I mean, you know, we bought our equipment that we use, uh, the, the microphones and the different things. We go through a lot of beer. That gets expensive. Mm -hmm. um, we picked up a few extra comic books here and there, of different things we need. Buy some little swag like this, you know, to promote ourselves. But, yeah, we don't make money off this at all. And yet, at the same time, the the first the first year I did, I the first year that we set the Patreon, I happened to mention the person that does my taxes. Like, oh, yeah, I got a Patreon. She goes, she's like, you know you have to declare that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but. I mean, you're still, you've got so much to write off that it's like. Yeah, and so much to write off and we don't make that much. I'm not really sure where it ends up. <laughs> I don't you know. It's all for fun. But no, I would be, I would be very happy to send you one of our, one of our oh shirts. Oh boy. Can I have a beer coaster too? You'll, I will be glad you'll get to a send you. Uh, you'll get a I swag set up, I'm sure. I, I need one of the beer coasters. <laughs> <laughs> not a pro I will send you a beer coaster and some of our stickers as well. That that is not a I actually bought these um with the idea there was a um, bar up here that was called the Nerd Out and they had comic book pages on the walls. The tables had the the uh silicone on the top but underneath was comic book covers. They had comic book themed drinks and you go in there and there's toys and and action figures all up on the walls, pictures. It just had to close down because of COVID. <sighs> Forever or just for the duration of the play? Forever. Uh, the, the owner, Mitch Gillian, is trying to... He's he's said, we're going to come back in some form. We're going to do something with our brand. But they had to close down. I, I went down. I actually bought one of their tables. Uh, so I've got a big big restaurant-sized table that we've got in our basement that's got all the comic book covers on it because I'm like, I, yeah. I need something. That, but that I is, love that place. That is heartbreaking. I want to go to uh, there. I want to go to there. I <laughs> Jeff never I've wanted to. I've been parenting. It's terrible. But yeah, it's like people would be coming in from out of town. I think uh, Rick took Liam Sharp there and his yeah, wife. Took and, Liam Sharp there. You know, it's just like it kind of became like the hey, if you foreign po you know, podcasters or people in the Hero Initiative or whatever were coming into town, it's like hey, while you're here, I got to take you there. And I'm like, I would love to go too, but I, I, I baby. So yeah, Stan Stan Sakai had been there a few times he wrote on he found one of his artwork on the wall he signed that and after they close when they closed down stan sakai reached out to mitch to personally say i am really going to miss that place and that just that hit him hard neil adams went there i just yeah they had a I've lot i've never of been and i miss it already yeah. but yeah I, I bought i got these kind of with the idea that oh these would be fun i can drop off a good handful down the nerd out great yeah. Never happened. It, who knows? It might come back in the future. He's holding on to the name, maybe, so. Maybe the yeah. Way. I we were we were down in Santiago, Chile, um, three four years ago now, maybe longer. One of our friends down there has a comic shop that is also a bar. Oh, nice. It's a little bit similar. But he also sells the books as well, but you know, it's in. It's got a. It's a. It's a whole warrant of different rooms where you can go to the bar and get your drink and go and sit down on the couch and read comic books. And, and it actually ended up as being kind of like a salon for creators, you know, where you go and uh -huh. sit in a very sort of a European kind of way and absorb alcohol and talk about quirky comic book stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think there, I think there is a market for this. And, and I hope that he, I hope that he's able to come back. I hope so too. Yeah. 
the first time I ever went there, I was actually meeting a podcaster who lives in Florida. He was coming into town. He wanted to meet up with me. And so, and he was meeting another local podcaster uh, there at the bar. That was Nicholas Prom from Comic Reflections, the local one. It was uh, Shag from uh, the um, Fire and Water Network. And they do a lot of Fire and Water being the, the two guys that founded the network. They like Aquaman and Firestorm. So <laughs> Fire and Water Network. Um, so he was coming to town. He wanted to meet me. So we met at the Nerd Out. And that's the first time I'd been there. And as the three of us are talking comic books, another guy, uh, Sean Wynn, who's into a lot of the publicity for comic – for the publicity for creative endeavors in Portland, he does a lot with that. He actually was a creative consultant for Nerd Out, a few of the local comic shops. But he comes sits down at the table and is like, what are you guys talking about? And that's how I met Sean. And it just – that's what happened there. You start talking comic books and somebody at another table like, oh, really? I'm interested in this. And – all of a sudden you're having this great conversation. I feel strongly that that actually is a good business model for the future of comic stores. Neil's store, Krusty Bunker, is literally around the corner from me, about 300 paces from where I live. Before the, before the plague, before <laughs> COVID, it was really, I mean, they just opened it last year and it was really beginning to shape up to be not just a comic shop and not just a shrine to Neil Adam, but also uh, a sort of a, a community center where I think it started with, with gamers because most mm -hmm. comic book shops are also gamer uh, nexuses now, hubs. But, you know, before all this went down, there was talk of, you know, having some sort of beverage service there or whatever. I think that Comic shops, ultimately, the, the model for survival is going to be becoming cultural centers yeah. where fans go to socialize uh, when socializing is allowed, where creative people and fans can get together as equals and uh, just talk. The lo there's a local comic book shop called Books with Pictures, and they really... They really stretch out the LGBTQ community, and they, they, they are a safe haven for that type of a place. Um, they they have a very strong connection with uh, J.M. Miles Explain the X-Men. They, they do a podcast on, on all X-Men continuity. It's really good. But they, they become a hub of a lot of open, friendly conversation, and they're one of the big corner piece stores, I think, in Portland. I've gone there a couple times when they've done big events like they did a, one guy did a uh, x-men event where he went through the entire history of all of the different x book titles and he did an entire presentation on it most of it to music it was pretty impressive wow. but <laughs> yeah it's that's fighting off a lot oh yeah it is. <laughs> it's one of those great places though where people can go and have these conversations and they can have forums and they can have those presentations and they can have Discussions on books, I think um, early on when Chelsea Kane was doing her Maneaters series, she was there doing some of her pre-promotions there with that book as well. The one lovely thing that we do have in Portland is we, have, we, have, we are swimming in comic book creators. I mean, you really can't throw a brick without hitting a comic that book creator. That is true. Which is, it's wonderful. So the last time I went to Powell Books, I saw Matt Fraction, Chelsea Kane, and David Walker. They were on a panel promoting Matt Fraction's book, November. And sitting right behind me was Brian Michael Bendis and his family. And it was just like, this is so cool, you know? <laughs> I'm making my own little heaven here with, with these creators. But having spaces like that where the creators and the, and the people can talk and have conversations, and I miss that a little bit even now, just being able to go to my local comic book store and go in there, be talking to the guy behind the counter, talking to this other guy who's lean on the counter over there. A couple of kids walk in saying, yeah, we want to get my dad a book. This is the kind of things he likes. And the three of us start throwing out different ideas about what book they should get. There's an interesting conversation that goes on at those stores. And you miss that. You miss having the, these kind of conversations where you can kind of joke about Who's your favorite character? Who would win in a battle with this? Oh, this era of these comic books were great until this one writer came on. They they killed it because we have feelings and we believe things because we're fans. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I, I hope Carrie will read some of that one when you get to that. Oh, oh no, we, she read yeah. that one. That actually that that issue comes out 
uh, this coming week. Oh boy! So it'll be out by yeah. this time. So <laughs> we recorded that uh, a month and, ago. And, and you you requested you requested that Katie have a lot of lines, and so we put a lot of lines in there too. Yeah. Right. Eric did the uh, first run on the script, and then I go after, and I'm like, Katie has more to say than this. <laughs> so. <laughs> Fuck. So, well, I, and that's the main character. <laughs> and there goes that character. Yeah. It's 400 pages of, of one page a- anthologies just where it's just somebody gets a power and then explodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noti- 18 chapters oh, in. No. I'm noticing a theme. <laughs> Doug, that's the way Douglas Adams was doing a, a series. He's going to have the end of every episode the Earth was going to explode. <laughs> eh. yeah, these things happen. Fuck. The next... When this craziness is over, I definitely want to come down and, and try to have a beer with you sometime in L.A. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have a beer with you guys. You know, your, your podcast does two things. It makes me want to read Power Pack again, and it makes me want to have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I do regret that I've actually talked to a couple of our fans who are like, you know that I, I am actually successful in Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'm like, oh, dear, I... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. They're going, no, it, it reminds me of the things I did enjoy about drinking beer, the taste and things like that. And, you know, not the bad stuff on the side. So thank but, you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I still feel bad. <laughs> it's, it's vicarious, you know, alcohol. And <laughs> We're not trying to trigger anybody is what it really boils down to. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I know. I, I, I live in fear of triggering people today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just it's that's that's the downside of developing understanding or wokeness or whatever. It's that you become aware of of how easy it is to have a bad effect on somebody. Fuck. Here, there's my three year old, almost three year old. Hello. Do you want to say hi to John? Can you say hi, hi John? Hi. Here, you want to hear this? Hi, yeah. Aurora. You can hear. You can hear. Hi. Rick. hi. Hi, Aurora. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's John. We're interviewing him. He, Hi. He writes and draws the uh, comic that me and Rick talk about. And that's Rick. Carrie was there with him for a little bit, too. Sorry, this is how you've seen me recently, Aurora. Does that, does that look familiar uh, now? Uh, you, you remember the masked man that comes into our front yard sometimes and gives me beer? <laughs> and stickers? <laughs> you want to just sit on my lap quiet? Fuck. Carrie Austin is a big fan of the book. Yeah, we need to we need to get him too. We want to try and get everybody. We, we need to get him on there too because we 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 treat him so badly on our show. Um. <laughs> we like what he does. I love the aspect that it's so kind of you know it's over here. Yeah, it's yeah. so off of center, and it's just like the memories of his stories for us are like amazing. And we're like, oh, I totally remember that. I remember the treasure hunt. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, that was great, too. And, but going back, you know, it's, hey, 35 years later, wow, time travel, you know, time passes. And we start looking at it with different, uh, you know, different perspective, different eyes. And it's kind of like, I remember this differently. Or I remember there being more to this. or or Yeah, I remember I enjoyed it a little bit better than it, than it holds up now. Well, I mean... Look, I, I look at my own stuff sometimes and, and get the cringes as well, right? Yeah. What's glorious about Terry's stories and glorious about my bad stories and glorious about Marvel in general in those days is that they just let us fu- have fun. They just let us play, you know? And there was always somebody like Wheezy in the back who could, who could fix it. But the, the, the Marvel age of comics was characterized by creative freedom and encouraging people to play. And I think, yeah, you get some weird, gonzo, zany Terry Austin stories uh, and, and John Bogdanoff stories, but, you know, you get elsewhere, you get elsewhere out of that. But uh, you also get the great masterpieces of Marvel out of that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The stuff no. Make the movies out of came yeah. from that atmosphere of freedom and play. No, that is so nice that it's so that it's that it's a playground that is kind of like you know we love the aspect that uh you know a lot of the s- stories that got made were kind of like hey Carl, what's the thing you like? You like the aquarium? Well, okay, let's do an issue about that. You like baseball? Well, let's do that too. We love yeah. the, I love that aspect that it, there was there was like you were saying such freedom out of it. And 
y you know, it was you know, push to failure. Go for it. Do you, you want to try yeah. a thing? Try the thing. Do it. And I love that. And I, and I love that about this this comic that that it's happened. like it's like your son Kalel tells his actors make strong choices. Better strong and wrong than careful. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I think sometimes when comics uh, become too controlled by management, that things get careful and therefore less interesting and less yeah. innovative. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to be innovative when you're uh, got all the safety nets on and you're kind of like, yeah. I want to do this thing. And it's like, no, let's not make it that. How about, you know, what's popular these days. Uh, this yeah. you've, you've, yeah, you've always liked this, right? Have this. Chase cool. Let's chase cool. But the trouble about chasing cool is you can never catch it. No, you can be cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I think that you, uh, you've done a lot to epitomize cool and, for us, at least, you have made Power Pack cool. You are, you are one of our favorites in this book. There is a very, very good reason your name is listed there with Wheezy and June. I mean, I mean, there is a real good reason why your three names are on there. Occasionally, when I need to to uh, inflate the little Shatner inside my <laughs> ego, I'll just look at the at the binder of that book and say, "Yeah." I'm on the same binder as June and Wheezy. <laughs> you you created things that made our childhood better by because you gave us something that we enjoyed reading, we enjoyed looking at, and you were part of the group of people that that made that gave us something that we could do a silly little show about, and we do appreciate that as well. And we enjoy taking your stories and retelling them. For your amusement. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and and amusing they are indeed. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad they we enjoy it. We will keep doing it. Yeah. We will keep doing we'll that. We'll do it until we I... run out of stuff. Well, thank you guys very much. Fuck. I am four or five pages from finishing my script on this one, so Jeff needs to go in there and make my jokes funnier now. <laughs> that means completely rewrite it. You know... <laughs> <laughs> or be inspired by it, and that he brings he brings the cake, and I bring the icing. We we mix it. There's we don't claim credit for anything. We're not too precious with our joke. Occasionally, we're like, I want this one, but for the most part, it's just kind of like you say a thing. I'm gonna put this on, and then he'll make you know he'll go over it and be like, Hey, what if we add this to it? And I'm like, Yeah, and then we could add this, and so it's you know it's borscht jokes, by jokes, the jokes, end. Jokes, 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 yeah. jokes. Try and make it fun. <laughs> and every now and again, we'll be in the middle of doing a script like. Hey, that was a pretty funny joke you wrote there. Like, wait, I thought you wrote that one. Yeah. Huh. Uh, well, that's, that's a pretty funny it. joke. That's yeah, still good. <laughs> that, that's good partnership. You know, that's 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 the fun of collaboration right there. Yeah. That that are I just randomly you know what would go good here is there'd be a good parody song here. Here's my thought. Yeah. And then he's reading through the script and all of a sudden he's like I have to write a parody. Yeah. So, sometimes I'll just I'll be like, oh, I want to plug this in here, and, and other times it's just like this, and it's like, ah, dude, I don't have time. These things take like a, two days. All right, fine. I'll uh, let's see what I can. Okay, now I'm into it. But <laughs> yeah. but you know, dudes, it's it's like it's like Power Pack itself. The whole thing's a labor of love. Oh, exactly. Yes. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't love it. That's the message that we're really just trying to convey is that. We might kind of, you know, we might kind of tear some stuff down or be kind of a little judgmental or be like, you know what? I didn't really, you know, this art I didn't like, or I wasn't really a fan of this storyline, or I hated this character or something like that. But for the most part, it's because we love the subject matter and the material that we're doing it. The honesty is important, man. The yeah. honesty is important. Yeah, you got you know, you love people yeah. for their flaws, not because of, yeah. you know, it's just, oh, it's, they're, the, they are the pedestal. There's nothing fun about that. And, and some of, some of the best parts are when you're making fun of us. No. <laughs> There's some stuff that there's some stuff as where it's just like as long as we do it with respect. As long as we do it with respect, we try. Uh, enough respect, as yeah, implied enough. respect. Humor is more important than respect. That's yes. really what it boils down to. Is just like yeah, gotta, 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 gotta 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 make laughs. Gotta have fun. Gotta enjoy if it yourself. Makes you laugh. That's the criteria. There you go, right there. We've actually had some people tell us that it's just like they're they're you know listened at like work at their desk in the before times as 
you say, and so do I, actually, which is great that you said that. Uh, yeah, where it's just like, yeah, I had to explain to my boss uh, why I was choking and spitting water up onto my keyboard and that, uh, just realizing i couldn't explain it was just like no i just i just i wrong play <laughs> we, we so, have yeah. pe- we've had people that have that have sent us something saying yes i spit my soda on uh, on my monitor at work because of you guys so <laughs> i but, love that made... i love listening to you guys when i'm penciling but i can't listen to you while i'm inking oh okay <laughs> so where there's room for error because <laughs> you could you can Erase that. <laughs> Pencils. Or your ink goes wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> what happened here? Well, I was listening to these two people talk, and was really I was laughing. Cool. That still kill. It just kills me that you that that you listen to it. Okay, that yeah. just. Okay, um, there is one last thing. There's one last thing that we'd like you to do, and that we'd like you to say, please say costume costumes off. Now, uh, I got this from the uh, podcast, the West Wing Weekly, where they have their guests that they have come in. They say, "What's next?" Because that's kind of their tagline. I stole that idea and I said, "Okay, when we have guests, we'd like them to say costumes off because that's how we end our show." I like that idea. So, at your leisure. Fuck. I know that she's been off camera because I've heard her sitting right here. Yeah, she was. Right <laughs> over, she was right over there until she got like, "Oh, for crying out loud!" <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "I know these stories." But uh, she was here for most. She was here for most, of it, and then Sepper arrived, so she's gone off to set it up. Well, it seems like it seems like she's a very big part of your life, and it was very interesting. I I didn't know if she was going to actually be there with you and talking too, which I was going to be fine with. But no, it was like I kind of like that. that because you're coming up to an issue that she wrote. Really? Oh, uh, hey, oh, John, could you do us a solid? Could you maybe talk to your wife and see if she'd like to be on with us? <laughs> could you put in a good <laughs> word? Which 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 okay, which cool. issue did she write? <laughs> the last one I ever drew. All right. It's a it's a sort of an interesting issue because it's the one with the dinosaurs and the mad thinker. Yep. Okay, I know which one it is. Hold on. <laughs> no, we'd we'd love to have her uh, sitting there with you and talking to us as well. All of my all of my power pack books are in a stack over there, so that as I get to the next issue for our show, I just take the next one off the top, and I don't have to go looking for them. So I have all of the things that we're going to cover, including like Fantastic Four issues and things like that. That's the one. If you look at the credits page, written by Judy Bogdanov. Or Judy nice. That's so great. I love the fact that, like, huh. Wheezy's daughter has, you know, written a couple of issues that your wife has. I, it's, it's so amazing just to have that kind of collaboration where it's like, you know, hey, come on in. Yeah. Come into it, the pool. The well, water is great. Like Marvel is like a family. <laughs> Carl Potts and Wheezy were just, they were very nurturing. And they were like, why not? You know? And, and Wheezy, was, Wheezy was an active encourager. The way she got Juliana to come on the show, she kind of like nudged Juliana to write some power back. She nudged me to write some power back. Me, she didn't have to nudge hard. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, she sort of, she was the one that encouraged it. She was the one that that uh, encouraged Judy to to take a hand at it. She was. I mean, this was Wheezy's premier creation in comics, and she was just she was actively trying to get other people to come in and play. That's so nice. That is so nice. I I completely got distracted because I'm like, I know I've already bought a beer for that issue. What was that beer called? So I had to go and look it up because I keep track of that kind of thing. I'm like, oh, that's right. And I can't tell. Is there a dinosaur beer? <laughs> if you want, if you want to tell them, I'll, uh, I'll unplug and then, and then just wave me back when you're uh, set. Sure. Okay. All right. Because I, Jeff honestly does not know at all what any of the beers are. It can stay secret. Oh no. He's, 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 he's got his uh, headphones off so I can say. Fuck. <laughs> So right. there we Jeff, go. You can put your things back in. <laughs> Doing it. Yeah, that's one of our shticks is keeping keeping that beer a secret yeah. so we can get my first response. Oh, it's going to be a delicious one. He he honestly has no clue. Uh, the with the COVID thing, I had to come up with a different way because usually I come over there and I have them in a bag and I just pull them out of a bag. But I was like, okay, well I can't do that. How am I going to get him the beers? And so I'm like, okay, well I'm going to put them all in. I go and buy the beers. I individually package them in in the little baggies and then 
because he, him and his family are completely siphoned off, I go over to the house, put him in a cardboard box, and then, you know, we'll kind of talk a little bit, and he'll eventually take the box, he'll have it staged in the garage for it to decant, <laughs> yeah, decontaminate. Yeah, we, we quarantined uh, <laughs> early and hard. So. Oh, dude. Yeah, you have a little, you have a little child. I know. We, you know, we are, we are super strict ourselves. Yeah, I have elderly parents. Uh, Hillary's parents have both died, but, like, I have parents in their 80s. And yeah. it's kind of like, you know, it's like, hey, they're hitting that decline kind of time. And it's like, got to go, you know, doing stuff for them. And it's like, just can't. Judy and I, Judy and I both are in the high-risk age range. And, uh, you know, thanks to our son, boy, he's been really great about keeping himself and keeping us in lockdown. We are, we are... We are super strict. It's hard. It is so hard. I see people just going out and doing stuff. It's like I was talking to a friend of mine that used to come over every Tuesday and we'd hang out and chalk and dinner and beers. And, you know, I used to go over to his place and we'd watch movies or play video games or whatever. And it's just kind of like, haven't seen him for, you know, the four months, but I actually, you know, finally got off my duff and was like, I'm calling him and talking. And it's just like, it's kind of business as usual for him where he's like, oh yeah, I'm going over to this housewarming party and playing a board game with this person that day and this and this and went over to so-and-so's house. And it's like, I'm not doing that. And I don't want to sound judgy, but I don't think you should either, but everybody's got to pick their kind of risk assessment okay. level. And I know I, I, I miss the world, but yeah. Fuck. We are Jeff and Rick Present, and we record and self-produce our podcast in Portland, Oregon, and Los Angeles. If you would like to talk with us, you can do so through Twitter, at Jeff and Rick Present, our Facebook page, Jeff and Rick Present, our email address, Jeff and Rick Present, all one word, at gmail.com, or at our website, Jeff and Rick Present dot WordPress dot com. Also, our YouTube site is Jeff and Rick Present. We are a proud supporter of the Hero Initiative, and we will be donating 10% of our Patreon donations to this great cause. We encourage everyone to give what they can to this worthwhile organization that helps the creators who provide us with such great content. Go to heroinitiative.org to find out more. Please rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher. This helps other people find us. And there's one more thing. That Rick forgot. <laughs> uh, when, when we do closing, we just we thank the powerful people in our packs, which is Rick's wife, Cindy, and daughter, Carrie, and my fiance Hillary, and our daughter, Aurora. So if you have anybody that you uh, care to give your love to, I think it seems like you you might have one or family two that you enjoy. One or two people. Yeah. Two people in your life, maybe, that you'd like to. Uh... Yep. But you can well, do pets, my, whatever. My short, my, there are so many people in my life that I need to be thankful for, but my short list would certainly have to be my beautiful wife, Judy, our amazing son, Kellel, and Walter and Louise Simonson. Thanks, guys, for having me on. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for still loving Power Pack after all these years. And this is John Bogdano saying, costumes off. Our theme music is 80s action. All music is by Kevin McLeod and Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by attribution for a point or license. Costumes <laughs> off. Hey, 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 Aurora, don't say costumes off. Whatever you do, do not say she costumes can't hear you off, Aurora. It's okay, uh, okay, don't say costumes off, honey. No matter what you say, don't say costumes off. <laughs> Doesn't matter. She'll grow into it. <laughs> what did she say? She didn't she say anything. Nothing. She's being difficult. Yeah, she's <gasps> kind of like you. She's a prima donna. <gasps> Carrie's back there playing with my uh, old nice. Transformers and GoBots. It's good to see a new generation getting into those. Very, very cool. Well, she was having fun trying to figure out how to, you know. Ah, laser beak. Buzzsaw. No, that's Buzzsaw. Yeah. Uh, this is Buzzsaw. I had an Insecticon. Mm -hmm. I had Ravage. And I had um, Swoop. Oh. I don't know where those guys somewhere, are. Or they moved yeah. on. No, I, I, they literally are. Okay. They would be not. in one place, and they are not in that. Okay. They are not in that box. The box that I've got: He-Man, Star Wars, <laughs> Mask, and Transformers, nice. and a little bit of GI Joe.